Whenever business and way of life in China is discussed, you always hear this one word, Guangxi. It is made up of two characters, Guan, which translates to close, and Yi, which translates to ties or connections. It can't be easily defined, but it is basically close connections and strong trust between two people. This connection involves one person doing favors for another person, and in times of needs, it is expected that the other person repays them for their past kindness. This can basically be seen as a never-ending cycle of favors between two people. The two people involved do not have to be of equal social standing, and most people have vast Guangxi networks with tens or hundreds of people that they help in return for favors down the line. But Guangxi is such a complicated and core element of the Chinese way of life that no single definition can truly explain all of its complexities. There are generally three different types of these connections, family, business, and helper slash personal Guangxi. You wouldn't really have family Guangxi with your immediate family though, as like most societies, it is just a given that family be there to help each other when in times of need. But extended family, like your in-laws, can be people that you have close Guangxi connections with. Business Guangxi or connections with an emphasis on helping each other reach financial success. And the last category, helper slash personal Guangxi, is a bit more complicated and it can be seen as an other category. This can be your relationship with your neighbor for example. You may go out of your way to help them and accordingly be able to expect that they would do the same for you when in times of need. Sometimes government guangxi is used instead of this third category as government connections are very important in the business world. But this ignores the reality of most people living in China who are largely uninvolved and unaffected by the bureaucracy and policies of the government. But again, I must emphasize that guangxi is not this simple. The relationships between people cannot always be categorized into just one of these classifications. In fact, most connections are a mixture of multiple categories, and if anything, these classifications just serve as a way to show the complexity of the Guangxi system. Repayments for favors can be given years after the other person helped them out. This is a system of trust between two people, so close ties must be maintained between parties. Such a system of trust can only exist with a deep connection to a country's history. Guangxi in particular can trace its roots back to Confucian teachings, which emphasizes the importance of community and doing good deeds while returning the favors of others. For thousands of years, China was largely a rural country. This meant that to increase your chances of survival, you would need to have strong connections with your community, so that you could reasonably expect them to help you when in times of need. Back then, the rule of law couldn't really be relied on due to those in power and their laws frequently changing. This forced Chinese people to largely rely on themselves and their community. This necessity, combined with Confucian teachings, is why Guangxi has become such an integral part of Chinese society. Confucianism, and by extension Chinese society, values collective benefits, long-term personal relationships, and mutual dependence. Oftentimes, Chinese people, especially businessmen, invite others to banquets to socialize while eating some delicious food. Sometimes this is done to increase their connections by extending their Guangxi network. Despite this, banquets are extremely common ways to just socialize with no ulterior motives. But to pay the bill, one person is expected to pay this time, and the other person is expected to pay the next time that they eat together. This is the mutually beneficial favor system of Guangxi. Family Guangxi is mostly based on emotional driven moral obligations, whereas business Guangxi is more so based on material and utilitarian gain. Two companies cannot have Guangxi connections with each other. Rather, it is individuals who perform favors for each other, which may help the corporation directly or indirectly. Guangxi has become a large part of doing business in China, and its necessity can be seen with the relationships between suppliers, buyers, and competitors, along with government officials. These connections may mean being the first to have access to new stock, or the first to hear about potential policy changes which may affect their business. However, sometimes this moral obligation can force people, and thus businesses, to act in ways that negatively affect themselves. They are expected to return favors, but there are times where every business struggles. This could force businesses in bad times into even worse financial situations. But in good times, Guangxi can help businesses succeed. Foreign companies are pretty much obligated to have some Chinese people helping them out when first expanding their business into China because they simply lack the connections needed to establish themselves in the market. However, there are price to some foreign companies that succeeded in expanding into China without the help of Chinese people with vast Guangxi networks. Due to globalization, Guangxi is less important in metropolises like Shanghai or Beijing. However, Guangxi still plays an extremely important role in rural areas. 
Guangxi gives businesses certainty that others will be there to help them when needed, but they never know exactly when such repayments will be given. It is important to note that Guangxi is a neutral world, it's not carried the nuance of being a force for good or evil. Family Guangxi, for example, is usually seen quite favorably, as it is fundamentally just a system of helping your family out. However, business Guangxi is not seen as favorably, as it creates a system where people outside of the Guangxi network are put at a disadvantage. For example, despite being more qualified for a job, someone may end up not being hired simply because they are less connected. Guangxi could lead to a system filled with corruption and nepotism. But it is often pointed out that Guangxi is a moral obligation that came about due to Confucian teachings, which emphasize being a Yiren, an exemplary moral individual. And thus, Guangxi is by definition ethical. This is why the term Guangxi Shui is instead used to refer to the illegal, immoral, and corrupt usage of Guangxi connections. All in all, much of Chinese society and business culture can be explained with Guangxi. Even in Southeast Asia, the overseas Chinese community came together to form their own Guangxi network in what is now known as the Bamboo Network. Guangxi can be summed up as simply the Chinese way of life, influencing China and the world for centuries in the past and centuries to come. And that's the end of the video, I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you all so much for watching.